One of, the, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about was um, the entrepreneur aspect of this industry. Uh, I know from earlier, 90% of the people are here for the business aspect of it. How many of you have run your own business in the past? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. How many of you have gone to outside investors to fund the business that you run? Only two, two or three? Okay, so you guys know what's involved when you go to an investor to bring in money. Were you successful in bringing in investments? One of the hardest things to do is to bring in investments. And one of the things that I've found um, uh, that, that most of the people in the industry right now that are looking into it, they've been successful. If you've been successful in another industry or another business, you will be successful in the cannabis industry. Don't take that as a guarantee, but success follows success. You have the strategies and you have the business acumen to be successful. You can just substitute whatever it was that you were doing for cannabis. Uh, the same thing as what Tyler was talking about. Um, I was in the telecom phone card industry for a number of years. Before that, you know, I, I was in uh, wholesale sales. Um, you know, but every aspect of what you're doing, you learn a little bit extra. A lot of people don't have that business aspect of it. And as an investor, I'm an investor in ArcView. I think we talked about that before. I don't know if you know what ArcView is, but um, I'll touch on it briefly. ArcView has been featured on Fortune Magazine. Uh, we were just in Denver with them recently. Um, it's like Shark Tank for the cannabis industry. If you have a business idea, you bring it to ArcView and you present it, and uh, investors get together and they decide whether they want to invest into your business idea or, um, or, or, or you. Um, one of the things that I've found is that there's a lot of great ideas. Uh, ideas are flowing everywhere, especially in this industry right now. And uh, I think, as Adam said before, it's very easy to get distracted by all the ideas that are out there because there's so much stuff that is going on. If you really want to be successful in the cannabis industry, you want to use what you've used in your business prior to this as, as a meter of how to become successful in this industry. Now, when I come to say that, um, it, what I'm seeing in a lot of people that are coming and looking for investments, they don't have a business plan. When I say a business plan, that's the simplest part. But there are other aspects that come in and run in your business. How many people here have a business plan? How many people here have an operating agreement? You guys understand the, the difference between business plan and operating agreement? Okay, not, not a lot of people do. Um, you know, how many people have a board of directors in their business? One. So, one of the things that a lot of investors look for, and me being one of them, are those key elements. Because if I'm gonna invest into your, or, or into your business, I wanna know that you're structured in the right way. So the same way as you would structure any other business, when you're coming into the cannabis industry, you wanna build your teams, okay? You can't do everything as running your business. So for me, in Florida cannabis, I'll, you know, I won't talk about my past industries. Right now, I'm building my teams. You know, I have the same video crew, uh, La Lasting Blueprint, that has been coming with us and uh, filming all of our events and helping us with that aspect of it. We, we use um, the AV company, uh, Red Sky, to assist us. We have a uh, back end with our um, support for our internet and our website. Um, I, we, we are building a sales department. And those are the different key aspects to building your team. But when, once you have your team, you also have to build those other key elements w which investors are going to look for, which are the fact that if you go out and you get hit by a car, is your business going to be sustainable? So what you've built, is it going to be able to run without you there? And it's a much different um, ideology than an employee aspect. Uh, many, many of you that have run your own business may understand this. Um, some people run their own business for a number of years, but they're married to their company. They're never going to be able to walk away from what they're doing because their business depends on them. Okay? So the, the, the mentality behind being a successful business owner or running a successful business company is the total opposite from being a successful 
entrepreneur, so to speak, or independent employee. So you need to start building and putting things in place that really make your business be able to succeed without you. Those things are operating agreements. The business plan, of course. Um, you also want to put into place a board of directors. These are the things that investors are going to want to know that you have in place. If I invest into somebody's company, I've seen some great ideas. And, and one of the great ideas uh, was an ancillary business. And they make um, products uh, as far as um, dab kits and different items for, um, uh, for, for the cannabis industry, uh, pre-rolled uh, joints, so to speak, and other items. But they didn't have the, the business setup that I saw would be worth my investment. Because there's nothing in place that if I put a half a million dollars into their company or a million dollars or I got together a few other investors to put money into their company that says that they won't use that to increase their salaries, that they won't pay themselves, that they won't buy a jet, that they won't buy a, you know, a limo and wrap it. You have, you have no knowledge that it's going to be run that way. So if there's anybody out there, is anybody here looking for investors for their business? One, two... Three, four. So if you are looking for investors for your business, those are the key elements and things that you want to put into your strategy to keep you focused because th those are the things that they're going to want to look for. Now, um, what we've been doing at the Florida cannabis industry is bringing you the best of the best because we, we understand that there is no way that you can learn this industry or this business in one day. It's impossible. You can't learn how to run any business in one day, whether it was, you know, a, a liquor store or um, a pawn shop or anything. So that's why each one of our events key in on different aspects of this industry. And we bring people to you to help you to build your own teams, to go out and find the key elements when you write your business plan that it sounds logical to an investor or or for you to, to actually be successful in this industry. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, what, what, what we're going to be doing, our next event is going to be in Tampa. And if there's any entrepreneurs that are looking to build for investment, we're going to do something called an entrepreneur roast. And what you do is you bring your investment idea or your business plan or your business, and you come into it with the knowledge that the panel that you bring it in front of is going to tell you everything that's wrong with it. And they're going to pick it apart. Because in business, it takes thick skin. If you're going to succeed in what you're doing in the cannabis industry, it can't be all blue skies. Um, Adam Bierman that was in here earlier, he put everything to uh, our... He put everything in terms that seem harsh to some people, but they're reality. It's the reality of the way things are. Everybody believes and builds their business plan on blue skies, the best possible outcomes. What, what we like to do is not find everything that is negative about it, but to find a happy medium. This way you have a dose of reality. Because the people that, that succeed are the ones that have a good mix of ambition, and vision with reality. So we're gonna be doing that in Tampa. I'm kind of excited about it because uh, it's gonna be an aspect for anybody that is looking into uh, being in this industry and to improve their business. Um, it's gonna be a two day event and that's gonna be one part of it. Um, Yes, and so we're going to have uh, a little bit more of a mixer, and we're going to spread it out over two days, and it's going to be in the same location that we had it at the Cuban Club. I don't have the exact dates, but um, it's going to be either at the end of um, August or early of uh, beginning of September. The next ArcView meeting is going to be September 28th. Now, some of the things that are really exciting to me is some of you uh, uh, familiar faces I've seen all the way since our first event in April in Ybor. And I know some of you have already been putting together ideas 
and business plans. I've actually uh, viewed a few of them, and some of them are really good. Um, and they are in the ancillary businesses. Now, I know earlier uh, it was said, there's no money in the ancillary businesses. I have to disagree with that. I believe that there is an opportunity for people in every aspect of this. Um, my history, I think we talked about it before, was in telecom. I came into the phone card industry back in 1996, and it was when they deregulated it, and AT&T was the monopoly. Uh, MCI WorldCom had uh, come out, and they deregulated, and they allowed people to get into the industry. Well, guess what? A lot of people, the, the federal government, the FCC, imposed rules and regulations which made it almost impossible for anybody to compete with AT&T or an MCI. So a lot of the small carriers operated in the gray market, the black market, very similar to what we have right now because it was impossible for those people to come around and do legitimate business in telecom. Well, eventually, most of those gray market people converted and they became legitimate and they were successful. But at the same time, there were ancillary businesses that prospered. Web developers that developed, um, the web developers that developed for me, we developed a technology to sell phone cards in a way that was never done before. We obtained a patent on it. The attorneys and the web developers that did that. Distributors that went out and sold the products that were developed. Um, there were printing companies that were printing the products. So the picks and shovels are out there. And, and a lot of the uh, business ideas uh, that we have seen are, you know, in items such as vape pens or the high-end um, um, dab kits that Tyler talked about. Some of these items, they're expensive. They're selling for four or $5,000. But as science and as this industry develops, those things are gonna be needed. There's gonna be a lot of different items that are. So I encourage you to get ideas for that as well. So if today you decided that um, becoming a farmer or growing or opening up a dispensary is your direction, I encourage you to follow that direction and anything that we could do to assist you, we will. But if you have other ideas that you wanna cultivate, I encourage you to go out there and learn about them. You know, every, I, I'll take this from Steve Jobs. Everything that's been created out there was done by people just like the people in this room. So it can be done. You could go out there and do it. It's just a matter of figuring out your specialty, building your team, and building a structure.